the Canadian National Exhibition. The annual fair had begun in 1879 as an industrial exhibition to highlight the latest technology in farming. It would be the first fairground anywhere to roll out electricity for its lighting and its railway. During the Second World War, the CNE, or the X as it's known, served as a base for troops waiting to go overseas. I've got people who tell me about uh, uh, camping in the horse palace. The stalls were converted to, uh, to bunkhouses for, uh, because it was a staging area. This was where, this was where uh, battalion after battalion was brought together to go off to World War II. Butler's Barracks would, was still uh, an officer's mess. Uh, there was a canteen, now the Coliseum building. Um, I think even the, this little music building uh, got pushed into service as well. And then in the post-war period, it became the showcase for invention, and particularly for baby boomers growing into their own. Uh, that was the real heyday of the, of the CNE, was, was when the boomers were coming here to get a, to enjoy the midway and to have fun with their parents, but also to uh, get a, a little glimpse of what the future might hold. the late Summer X was home to media superstars. Anne Murray, Frank Sinatra, the Beach Boys, all made for exciting stories in Toronto's daily newspapers. But more often these days, the headlines are first broken by radio and television. Toronto airwaves are filled with all news stations and the voices of almost every cultural group in the megacity with festivals that celebrate that world writ small in Toronto. visit our website on topoftheworld.net.